Hmm, good day, Tragic here, and welcome back to Lord of the Rings. We are actually up to part two of the Daredevil cycle, which is the quest called the Seventh Gate. It's the second of the Kaz box. And yeah, this is a this is a fun quest. This is actually one of my favorites. Not this version of it. The Nightmare version is a great quest. It's a really fun quest and also a great quest for testing combat decks because there's so much combat in this. And I'm running a combat deck, as you can see. Okay, this is a very good opening hand, so we're definitely keeping this hand. And you pass. This, uh, I really wanted to use Hannah in this deck, but he's been nerfed to hell. Okay, and this is a pretty bad opening hand. Actually, it's not too bad. We've got the Riverdale in first turn, plus we've got Fetches, so we're actually going to keep this one as well. Anyway, I'll talk about the decks as we play. Basically, I'm trying to go a bit faster than normal because i told that I tragically blather too much. Okay, so the first quest you might remember, we came into Moria, we went through the halls, we went across the bridge, and then we fought an Orc Patrol. And we captured one of the guys and we got him to tell us to sort of head to the Chamber of Secret, Chamber of Records or whatever it's called. And that's what this quest is. In fact, these quests, the, the, the Kazadoom box quests, these three quests are so linked that if you've got good decks, you can actually just stack all the quests into a single pile and play it in a single go because they kind of got away from that. Like, like the early packs tell a really defined story, but as they got further into the game, the the, cats, the, the the packs really became standalone quests in a way. Anyway, whatever. Let's keep going. You are investigating the seventh level of Moria, searching for the Chamber of Records and any sign of Balan's colony. In the heavy twilight of a hall, a bulky tome is discovered in the grip of a dwarf skeleton. You carefully take possession of the book. Perhaps it'll give you some answers. <laughs> maybe. Maybe it will. Or maybe it won't. Okay, the dwarven ruins of the book appear to hold a detailed record of the fledgling colony, but there is some elvish script at the end, which seems out of place. Reveal two cards. Bam. Bam. Okay, this is bad. This is uh, Watchful Eyes. We will attach this down here. Basically, Watchful Eyes just says uh, that... If we tap him, if we tap this bloke, Watchful Eyes basically says that if this guy is tapped at the end of the combat round, we have to add another card from the encounter deck to the staging area. The book that we've got basically just allows you to quest without tapping and then you can't actually attack. So no attacking and you don't have to exhaust it to quest. That's what these two will is because he's always adding his will. And this one here just says kill an ally, basically, and we have no allies, so that does nothing. So we start with zero in the staging area, which is good, but starting with a watchful eyes is bad. Okay, so let's draw the next card. And we are using Bilbo, who I think is an incredibly underrated hero, to draw a second card. Your blam. Okay. Wow, we've got three of these in our opening hand. That is horrendously bad. So let's discard. We draw two. Got some more spirit stuff. And I think I will discard one of these, you know, Masters of the Forge. You don't need three Masters of the Forge. One, two, three. Place out a Minstrel. And that's going to allow us to search for a song. And I'm going to take Song of Kings. We won't need those spirit uh, resources for a while. Okay, that's his turn done. Yoing! Over here. Okay, so this is a very good opening hand. We are going to go one and put out you. And that's all we're going to do for now. Besides quest. We want to keep uh, some, because we've got an opening hand faint, 
we basically want to try and make sure we've always got one faint available. There is some very nasty trolls in here that we don't want to deal with. Okay, so we're questing for six. Yablamo. Yablamo. Okay, so this guy is, what? Doom 2. One, two, one, two. And he also gains one wound because of Thalen, which is this boy here. Now this guy is hitting for three, but he also has minus two. It's pretty handy. So he can one shot him because he's actually got zero armor and he's already got one wound. But we are plus one, so that's nice. And then we travel here, and then we're gonna have this guy come down here and get a card. And I'm gonna spend one resource. Oh wait, hang on, I misread that. Hands upon the bow. Sorry, I thought I had quick strike to allow us to fight straight away. So actually what I'm gonna do, let's put this card back on the top. like so and I'm spending the one resource and we're doing hands upon the bow this allows us to attack into the staging area so bam we attack into the staging area and that is enough to kill him plenty and we get two progress tokens from Legolas like so pretty decent start let's tap you now and see what is coming next out of the encounter deck Okay, we're gonna leave that at the top, return to top. And let's draw and draw our next card as well. Remember, because we've got Bilbo, every single turn we get to draw an extra card. Uh, if whoever's the first player draws the extra card. And that's why he's so powerful, because it doesn't matter how good your, your cards are if you don't have them in your hand. So anything that allows you to draw more cards is awesome, but particularly passive effects like this, that you don't do anything. It's just like you draw more cards, period. Fantastic. Okay, so we're going to go one, two, three, and place out this bloke. He is a fetch. And once we get a couple more of our weapons, we can uh, you know, start tapping him for questing power. Remember to leave that one up for faint. Meanwhile, over here, I'm going to go one, two, and put out you. And I'm also going to go one and put out you. Let's go to quest, quest. And make sure I don't forget to use this thing. I'll put both of these guys kind of next to each other so I don't forget. Okay, so requesting for six, we keep this clear, which is nice. That's one and two. Okay, so this guy comes out. So this is deal X damage to one ally he controls. X is the number of allies. So we have one ally, so that is one wound. And this guy has three allies, so we're just going to kill this bloke. Easy. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to tap this and do straight shot, which is exhaust a weapon to automatically kill anyone with uh, zero armor who's in the staging area. And lo and behold, zero armor. So you're dead. So that's plus six. So that is one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, we're doing pretty well so far. So let's tap you and look at the top five cards. We're looking for, this one can pick any attachment. Uh, and we're gonna grab the Steward of Gondor and send the rest to the bottom and shuffle. And then this guy, he can only fetch weapons. So it's the top five and we're looking for weapons. There is one weapon. And then I'm going to tap you 
and check out what's coming next. Okay, it's an armory. Excellent. So let's return to top. Blamo and Le Blamo and Le Blamo. Excellent. So we have the belt now. So we've got our color matching. We've also got a spare song of travel, which you don't really need anymore. So I'm going to, what am I going to do here? I'm going to spend one resource and place the song of travel over here. And the reason I'm doing that is there's a number of cards that make you discard attachments. And this way I've got something to discard instead of my weapons. That leaves us one more point. I do have this little guy, which is a handy little card. Problem is I don't know what's coming next. I think I'm just going to leave this here. So quest, quest. Meanwhile, I won't bother with this just yet. And yes, that's just a quest like so. Blamo, that's the location we know is coming. And the second one is a monster. He gets one wound. Right. So that's still plus two. And then this guy we can optionally engage. So we are going to optionally engage down here. Travel to this location. We're going to block using whatever his face is. Nothing. That's actually a more dangerous thing. There is a number of cards. It's not this one. There's a goblin gate or something that actually has plus three attack to goblins. I think there's three of them in the deck and they will basically one shot. That's why it's really important for us to get our burning brands on as quickly as possible. But anyway, we do block that. He attacks for three. We block for three, no damage. And then I just attack over here. This guy is killed. Puts two things on here, and this is also destroyed. Now, this one says, after it leaves play, we can attach a weapon or armor for free. And you blam, down it comes. Okay, again, we do our tappies. So that is search the top five for an attachment. There's one attachment in here. And search the top five for a weapon. Don't get any. Le blam and le blam. Oh, and he gets to draw another one because of Bilbo. Right, so we've got our secret weapon, Mr. Beekeeper, who is a boss. I'm going to keep him for later. So now we've got quite a lot of resources over here. We have to decide what we're going to be doing with them. We can actually, we actually have enough to cast Bjorn now, don't we? Three, four, five, six. It'll leave us one remaining point. So that's one, two... Three, four, five, six. That'll help us that we can now defend against that humongous uh, troll. Bam. Meanwhile, over here, we're going to spend one. Then we're going to go one, two, and place out this guy. Tap one, two. And we've got another two points left, so why don't we post two more and just go bam. Zablam, zablam. I think, uh, I think I'm good for now. We're still plus six. Draw and draw. One, two, one, two. That's from the Doom 2 here. And this guy is another plundered armory, so uh, 
before in the action phase before we travel i'm just going to tap this bloke see if we've got another weapon yep let's grab that weapon so let's travel here so this is three and this is three so it doesn't really matter which one we travel to Uh, did I? Did I place the progress tokens? Oh, we had no progress tokens because it was six, six, zero. Okay. Okay, let's tap. Look at the top five. Okay, there's a resourceful. Tap. Look at the top five. There is a burning brand. This guy allows you to pick up any attachment, which is very handy. Okay. And then we're going to tap. Look at the top one of the encounter deck. Remember, this guy allows us to look at the encounter deck. If we don't like it, we can send it to the bottom. And you know what? We don't like this guy. We're sending it to the bottom. Bam. Return to bottom. Okay. Actually, let me just think. Let me let me let me just think. Actually, because I'd rather get that out of the deck. This guy, we have to deal with a six attack, which we can actually absorb with this bloke here, right? We can even use this to kill him. We do have a feint. This guy is attacking for three. And this guy is attacking for three. That's six damage. He only has four blocks. So we can actually kill this guy next turn without any worries. So I think I'm actually going to change my mind. I'm actually going to leave that on the top. Let's just hope we don't get two of them. And we draw our second card. Bam. Okay, so. Let's discard this. And go one, two. Don't think we need two resourcefuls, do we? Oh well, may as well. Let's just discard this one. Okay, so I think I forgot to use all these guys again. Right, so let's just go quest, quest. Save up those resources. Meanwhile, over this side of the world, let's uh, go tap one, two. And we're going to go one, place out another weapon. We're also going to go keep this guy in reserve. May as well go one, two, and place out this guy, and one, and place out this guy. So our board is starting to look a lot healthier. And I think I'm going to tap this guy to quest and this guy to quest as well. Since we've got that hardcore monster coming out. Okay, so let's draw. It's the troll. And the next one is just a normal little lodgy, modgy monster. Okay, this guy also gets a wound from our thing. Now... Let me think, how is I going to do this again? We are negative one, but there's nothing I can do about that. Well, I can, I could use this, but I don't think it's worth it. So we're going to go Yes, yeah, so we're going to go plus one threat, because we didn't uh, get rid of any threat, and then 
before we do the thing of fate, oh, we actually traveled with this guy, didn't we? No, it doesn't matter. So we're going to optionally engage this guy down to here. And then this guy is going to naturally engage down to here because this is the first player. Okay. Gets a card, gets a card. We're going to block, spend one to keep him around. So this guy is Sentinel. We can block on either side. We pay a resource to keep him around. So we're blocking this thing. Wow, look at that, plus three. So this guy is actually attacking for five. So if we blocked with this guy, he would have died. This guy only has five health, so he's actually killed. And this one here, we are spending one resource to faint him. Okay. Then we are simply going to attack. So this guy is attacking for three. This guy is attacking for three. But when this guy attacks, he's minus two. And this guy is also minus two, which means he is actually minus four, which means he's zero, which means we have one, two, three, four, five, six damage, which of course added to the other damage he got is seven. So this guy is killed out of the game because he's got 50 points. And then I'm just going to tap this guy and kill this bloke. And he's also destroyed. Now, in addition, we get two progress tokens from Legolas plus two progress tokens from the Blade of Gondolin. Bam. Okay, and then I'm going to tap you. Look at the top five. Nice. And let's also tap you. Look at the top one. It's a monster, so we'll just return that to the top. Okay. Blamo and Blamo. Oh wait, you know what I forgot to do? Draw another card. We also forgot to tap one of our weapons and do Foe Hammer. After a hero you control attacks and destroys an enemy, exhaust a weapon card attached to that hero to draw three cards. So we'll just one, two, three. Okay. Tap one, two, so that's one, two, three, four. Wish we had this guy on the table before we lost those eagles. We have got another feint in hand. And we've now got the quick strike. Okay. Meanwhile, over here, we've got one, two, three, four, placing out resourceful. I think we're done with these guys. We'll start, we'll just make them questers now. And I'm also gonna go one, two, and place out burning brand. And we we're done with it. We actually, I'd like to get the other one of these, but uh, I may as well do one more. Oh, we're only plus two. Why are we only plus two? Oh, wait, I'm not questing with you. Why are we only plus three? One, two, three. Oh, right. Oh, sorry, I know what's going on. Yeah, let's tap you as well. So we're plus five. Oh, you know what else I'm going to do? Actually, I can't because I've used all my resources. Blamo and Blamo. Two wounds. Uh, okay. We're still plus three. One, two, three. 
Let's travel to this location. We'll optionally engage this one down here. We'll have this one engaged down here. Gets a card, gets a card. We'll block with this bloke, yoink. Nothing. We'll then attack with Legolas, which will kill him. Place two progress tokens. We'll block with Denethor. He has got Burning Brand, so the shadow card just gets discarded. And then we attack with this bloke. He's also dead. And that's another two cards. Let's tap you. Nothing. I don't think I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna start just using this guy as a quester. Okay, Blamo, Blamo. He gets one extra card from Frodo, plus he gets an extra card from Resourceful. And we're almost at the point where we really got to start using some of our multicolored cards. We've got so much stuff going on here. So I'm going to go one, two, three, four, put out another Resourceful. Let's just go quest, 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 quest. Meanwhile, I'm going to go quest, quest. And that's it. Tap one, two. We're plus nine. One, two. He gets a wound. Oh yeah, this one says each player must raise his threat by one for each enemy in the staging area. Then the last player discards an attachment he controls. Now, if you look, there was no guys in the staging area when this came out. So that doesn't trigger, but we do have to discard one attachment. And I'm just going to discard this one. Okay, then this guy will come down and attack. We'll block, automatically discarded by the brand. And then we'll just go attack, attack. And that's plus three. That's 12, 13, 14, 15. That'll actually, that's fine. So that's dead. And then this is one, two, three. And that's cleared. The fate of Balin. You have discovered the chamber. Before you lies the resting place of Balin, the last Lord of Moria. The final portion of the book tells of the grim tale. Balin was slayed in the Dimeril Dale, and the dwarves were then trapped in the mines. It seems as if there are no survivors. You stand silently by his tomb, but cannot tarry. Orc war cries and horns sound close. You leave the cumbersome book as a testament to the dwarves' valour and prepare to fight your way out, lest Balin's fate becomes your own. So that is the book and the tomb that uh, they find in the book Lord of the Rings. Okay, when revealed, remove the book from the game. So we dump the book. That also gets rid of this two automatic will. At the end of the staging step, reveal top X cards from the encounter deck, adding all enemies to the staging area, discard all the other cards revealed without resolving them. Very, very important. So basically, you just draw two extra cards at the end of the staging step and discard anything that's not a creature, but you also don't do, res you don't resolve them. Like even dooms and surges, you don't do. So that's about that. Okay, so let's go your blamo and your blamo and your blamo because we draw our next one for the, the dude. Tap one, two. Okay, so we're going to go one, two, three, four. Did I do that right? I think I didn't. I'll just take another one. I think I clicked and it didn't actually go down at one point. Let's also spend one and place out another one of these. And let's also spend one and place out another one of these.
Okay. So we're going to go quest, 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 quest. Meanwhile, over here, we get plus two from the two resourcefuls. And I'm just going to go one and place, uh, no, I'm going to go here, one and do this one. Deal two damage to the first enemy revealed from the encounter deck this phase. So let's just stick that up there. And I've got quite a lot of other stuff going on here. So I think I'm going to go one, two, three, and place out another quester. Quest, 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 quest. Plus 11, so that is draw, draw, and then we draw two more. One, two, they're both monsters. So wound, wound. This one allows, it has, forces us to kill something. So we're going to kill this guy here. And we have one, two, three, four. So I'm just gonna place, I'm just gonna kill this bloke here. Also, this one places two damage on the first enemy released. That's one, two, three damage, including the one from Thalen. Bam. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do is hands upon the bow, exhaust a character you control with range to immediately declare it as an attacker, get plus one during the attack. So we spend one attack with this bloke. So he's attacking for four into the staging area, plus he's got negative two from both the Rivendell blades, which means this guy has four minus, uh, this guy has zero armor which actually makes him take four wounds. One, two, three, four. And he's already got three wounds. That's seven wounds. Seven does kill him. So bam, that's the end of him. In addition, We are going to tap one of our weapons to do straight shot. Exhaust a weapon to kill an enemy with zero armor. So, bam. That gets rid of this guy because he's got zero armor. And then this guy, you know, now we're plus eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This guy then comes down. We block. Automatically discarded from the brand. And then we just attack with this guy. He's got two of those things. So that's another two tokens. And this guy is also dead. Wow, we are thrashing this quest. I hope I have not made a bunch of mistakes. Ah, oh, finally I get my attachment removal. All right, so let's go plus two from the two resourcefuls. Then I just go one, two, place out a dwarf that deletes this uh, condition attachment. When this guy comes into play, you just discard one from play. And I think I'm gonna go one, two, and put out this thing here. And that's that, so let's go quest Let's go quest, 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 quest. And let's quest with uh, this guy as well, bam. Meanwhile over here, tap one, two. Let's go one, two, three, four. Place out another quester. And it's quest, 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 quest. We've got both of these guys are gone now, both the trolls, so may as well also quest with this bloke. Why not? 
So we're questing for 14. We only need 17 to win. So looks like we're in for something good now. You blamo, you blamo, you blamo, you blamo. Wow. So it could have been worse. Basically, the worst one to get is, I think I've actually killed one of them, this guy here. I think there's only one in the deck, though. So he has Surge and he has Reveal. So sometimes you can get, like, a whole slew of these guys come out. But it really is not a problem because everyone gets a wound, remember, because of Thalen. This guy only has one wound, so he's automatically killed. And then, of course, we're just going to discard the Beekeeper to do one damage to everyone in the staging area. And that's why the, this is why the Beekeeper and Thalen is such a potent combo in Daradelf because all the base orcs only have two health. So, bam, they are all dead. Yoink. And that's plus 14. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four. Bonk. 24 progress. That is completed. And it's a perfect complete too, because we have no, no, uh, whatever it's called, no monsters, no locations. Wow. And we didn't even, sometimes you can go a lot slower than that. Like I've got all this uh, threat reduction here that we didn't use. I didn't get to use this thing either. Like sometimes if you're having a bit of problem with questing, this card is excellent. You know, it can really, because basically everything is two minimum. So it's like one point for two tokens, but you can hit a four token quite easily. Plus you get to peek at what's coming in the deck. Yeah, so that was massive. So again, with Reign of Arrows, uh, this is a fantastic card. You can basically pull all the pull as many monsters as you want to a single location. And then with Thalen putting one damage on all those orcs, this card can like kill it's the same as Beekeeper, it can just kill them all. But yeah, the real combo for this particular quest is Beekeeper and this guy. So pretty much no matter what we drew. There's no other. We've got every single monster in the deck. <laughs> but what I'm saying is, like, in those last turns, you can sometimes get huge amounts of monsters come out. And Beekeeper, even in later games when you've got, like, four players and you draw, like, you know, ten monsters in a single go, you can just kill them all. It's awesome. Well, that is that, and I will see you guys next time.